you're not even going to have to barely do anything because this, your op, that, that hand, my right hand in this case, that opposite hand, the one that's receiving, he's already pushed. Now by going dead center, whether he goes dead center to me and I'm going dead center to him, that makes it even. And if you notice, I have a foot forward. It makes a big turn and twist. So here we're back to health and conditioning. This makes you feel your root. It makes you turn your waist. If I, if I push back to Dave and Dave pushes to me, to turn to the side where my leg is back is always easy. To turn to the side that's opposite your foot forward is hard. So you have to learn to condition that. All right, because you're yielding. Somebody's coming toward you, you're going to yield. Well, when you yield, and if you really want to take Tai Chi, right, we're going to just straighten out. Again, we're going to keep the same hand and foot forward if we take this to the next place. Start thinking about applications or say simple things like grasp the bird's tail, right? If Dave pushes and we do this and I dissipate this, grasp the bird's tail. You're right there. This, my forward hand deflected, pulled him back. I wore it off. The other hand, I make a step back. My other hand goes on the crook of the elbow, and there I am. And the harder that he pushes, the easier it's going to be for me to take him down. This is where this is all leading to. All right, so we go back, right hand and foot. So now we take the same exercise, and the goal is to do one of two, is to then push to the chest. So Dave could push to my chest or I could push to his chest. We went from going really slow because you want to develop your body movement, you want to develop your coordination, you want to develop the coordination in your waist, right, the Chinese waist, in the gua, movement starting from the dantian, hands moving, everything's moving. So we're doing this nice and slow. And I know, because my students do this, this is how I, you know, you learn all these things. They go, ah, oh, we have to do this again for two hours in class. I go, no, we're going to have some fun, right? The fun is you try and push me over, I'll try and push you over, and we'll see how we do. And speed doesn't make any difference. So now you can do whatever you want. So we start to, yeah, and, and you can push back, Dave. It's OK. Right? I'm not trying to. It's just, I push more than him. Could he get me just as easily? Yeah, all I have to do is be a little bit off of my timing. Right? Now, he didn't get me with the push, but Dave, he likes to cheat. He hit me with his, he hit me with his form, which is good, though, because it was there. He comes, he, can't, he comes in. If he would do it again, he comes in. I got away with this, but he got that little extra extension. He puts his arm on me, and we go. Now, right? When, you, when we start to do this, right, go easy with the person, right? You don't want to hit them. That's why it's just open hand. It's not so much you're trying to strike the person. You're trying to get them trapped. If you find that you're always getting trapped with the hand here and you can't, and you can't escape this, 99% chance that you're just not turning your waist soon enough. If you turn your waist immediately as I start to push, if Dave didn't move at this point and his hand just collapsed, even if he went back, I would be on that side of his chest. So if I really pushed, I should go. And that's usually what, what, what will cause that. So, but when you start to add forward momentum, now you're back to timing. You've got to refine your timing. So we're kind of like pushing and we're starting to speed. And you could go slow, fast. The person who pushes is the person that has the control. So if I push and then I stop here, that's fine. Develop feeling and sensitivity. Dave just turns over. He goes right from there. If I push, I go all the way through. He goes right from there. I push and I go, oh, I'm going to push. I'm going to see if I can get him. He can push. He goes from there. Right? He pushes to me. He's still seeing this because we're doing it together. We're seeing if he could get me. He stepped. That's the step you're looking for. Because in, in, in the reality of it is pull, push. If I get him to step, if he makes that step, I'm right in his center. He just go. It's no, it's no problem for me. Why? Because I just attacked his center on the weak side of his stance. It's, I mean, anybody could do this then. 
So, but you want to condition this to bring it all together, to stay together, to develop this at a very high, high level. The more that you develop it, the, the better that it's going to get. So you do it. Now, the other one I did walking. You could do this walking. I wasn't taught that way. Traditionally, it's not taught that way. But we could come back. Dave in a Tai Chi, right? I'm in a bow and arrow. Dave can take two steps, half step, full step, full step, and push. And then I could go half step, full step, full step, and push, slow. Because again, where are you leading to? Well, chances are most opponents that you're going to are not going to be static. You're not going to be standing, you know, probably not toe to toe, though you might. You start to deal with that incoming energy and that force. So you develop it. Can you do it? Absolutely. I encourage it. The more you play with it, the more fun you have with it, the more you practice it, the better that you get. And you go. And even there, you see my front foot lifted just a little bit. My timing was a little off. I was a little bit tight. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't rise up. I shouldn't feel my heel lift. If I feel that, I go, you know, I, I was too close. I wasn't, I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And when you do it right, it's always effortless. No effort whatsoever. I could be doing this with a guy six foot tall, 450 pounds. You know, I'm five foot six, 200 and something, 230, <laughs> 40. But you can have someone really big and someone really small. It shouldn't make any difference if you do it right. All right. So this is the simple push hands exercise um, that we do. It's a easy exercise to initially get hard to develop. Just take your time, don't worry about it, and, and you'll get it. Have lots of fun. Now we're going to take that same simple push hands exercise and we're going to incorporate the use of two hands and using two hands to do this deflecting type of movement. And it'll be used on either side. And you're going to see, you'll see how it's going to work. All right, so we set up the exact same way. We're going to be my side in the Tai Chi, right? So Dave is here. I'm in a Tai Chi. This time Dave's going to start with one hand on the elbow, one hand on the wrist. Now, he's going to push. So again, both elbows are down. Push. If you're doing Tai Chi, there's a push. Call and push. Right? Grasp the bird's tail. Call and push. You know, uh, you know put any t almost every Tai Chi form has some kind of push in it. The two hands, elbows down. So this hand is going to be elbow. The other hand is going to be back of the wrist. Everything is still the same. So you see, I'm right, I'm right here. The first thing that that does with two hands is he kind of is then able to manipulate my shoulders and spine and my arm becomes like a bar in front of me that he can easily use to control me. Again, when he puts, when Dave has his hand on my elbow, it's the center of his palm is on my elbow. It's not his fingertips, it's not his thumb, he's not too far down. I want to be centered. Why? Because there's less chance of me rolling off or me moving or me sliding off or doing any of that other stuff that we're going to do. So the hand's right on the elbow right here, right? Just like we talked about with the other one. Now, we're gonna, it's going to be uh, fairly simple. We start up. As Dave, um, all right, we're going to let Dave's pushing, no problem. Right, as Dave pushes, I'm going to roll back, do the same movement. I take my opposite hand, and in this case, because I'm left hand foot forward, it'd be my right hand. Opposite hand goes to the elbow, and I turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn and pull him to the. He gets goes to the side, so my hand's at the elbow. So I'm controlling his arm. My hand will turn over. I'm going to push not only my my wrist to the center, but I'm going to push his elbow. Both hands push to the center of his body. So I push to the center. Now Dave, as I push, he's going to come to my elbow. So first what we're going to do is each of us are going to come pushing elbow to elbow. So now if you go, well, I don't know if I'm going to escape that push that he's doing. You're going to start getting used to using your opposite hand to help you along. Now that also keeps me from, on the martial side, coming in. If I go to come in, Dave. He has me. He's got me all tied up already. 
right? So I don't have, he doesn't have to worry about that. So I roll back 